Hello, it's Joyful Hermit again, and I want to continue um, this evening. My spinal headache has been too bad for me to do much else, so I want to read something to you um, <clears throat> from Luke the Physician. And <clears throat> this was in that period of time, back in 1988, where I was having some experiences of great wisdom being told me and great personal help. And I haven't shared them um, over the years, but I think that I should now. I'm not sure why I think that, but it, it just seems to be a good time to do so. And um, in this particular one, Dr. H had been wanting, he'd been working with me on pain management and uh, helping me get through the surgery that was so difficult and adapt to loss of my career, loss of my marriage, loss of insurance, and uh, a life of tremendous suffering. So, um, and, and my mother also, and others, family and relatives and friends, were very upset. To my mother, it seemed like my life had been ruined and to me also, I have to admit, my career was gone, everything was gone. Um, so anyway, uh, Dr. H had asked, is there anything at all that could be done to help in the healing or the pain? So, and this was who started speaking, Luke the physician, he says, Simply love is greater than anything he could do. And why don't I believe him? Why don't I simply love and remember to love? It's the pain that reminds me to love and to do that which I am supposed to do. If I didn't have a very strong reminder that I am too young in my faith, I would be off. And I would be called back into the world too easily. And that I am not ready to not have a good, firm reminder. Then within myself, although I could not speak, but I could thought flash, because he was speaking through me, but I could thought flash, and I said, if that pain were healed, I would be free to use all of my energy to love. But he said, you are but a child. That was a very sweet but childish thought. But pain can be relieved when I attain unconditional love for myself or others when I attain the status of those before. John of the Christ. Attaining unconditional love is not an upward movement. It's more of a horizontal movement, and that is a very simple development that doesn't necessarily take time. It's not the time. It's the depth of the learning the depth of the faith and the love, that it is the great belief that all things are possible and of learning that and of staying with it. People in our lives, it is not just me. Anyone could strive for this that I happen to desire very much. And of course, that remains to the, to the day that I desire spiritual betrothal and matrimony with God. And I desire to love in a type of purity that will be very helpful to others, but also to glorify God. He continued to say, um, people in our lives, it is not just me, anyone could strive for this that I happen to desire very much and that this pain is a strengthening device, and that, yes, I am a rare and beautiful bird in this lifetime, and that a part of my rare beauty is the innocence that I have of the naivete of a child, of wanting and believing and not realizing that I am rare and beautiful, and of not becoming what we call a conceited person, but innocently strive forth. That is what anyone could have. And at this point, I was very embarrassed. I have never taken compliments very well. And Dr. H was sitting right there. 
but I realized that yes, this is for anyone and for everyone. And um, for those who suffer especially, um, there is there's a humbling aspect to it. And we don't realize the beauty that develops within us through long suffering. And that as we unite ourselves with Christ on the cross, there is a form of beauty of anguish and pain, but of letting go and of having full faith that we are with God and in union with him. And he crowns us, yes, maybe in this lifetime with a crown of thorns, but the beauty of love will transcend and take over. But my spirit is open to this growth, and I'm willing to endure whatever pain. And remember that pain at other levels and dimensions is sheer joy. Wherefore, I must not fall back into the pain of how the, and how the world perceives pain. But it is so easy for a person living in these times to view from the world. And this world is so much like an evil sponge with tentacles that reach out and grab the people and sucks them back into the mouth of the evil. We don't even see the evil. We remain at this very banal level. And that is what I do when I don't remember the joy of the pain. When I fight against the pain, it is from the demands and the demands of other people who want me to not have pain, but do not understand that I can learn and grow and strive toward that which my heart desires from the very beautiful point of the joyful pain that I bear. And again, this is for everyone. Everyone is going to suffer at some point in time. I have a couple of friends who suffer from mental illness, and what a cross is that to bear. And um, of course, we must desire and strive to have physical healing in our lives. But after this was spoken to me, I um, understood a little bit differently, although it was still uh, maybe five years before uh, a Protestant assistant minister introduced me to a religious sister at this convent where his wife happened to be a nurse in the health care unit because he said he thought the sisters might be able to help me more with yet another message I had about mortification and uh, that they would understand suffering in a way that he didn't understand. So sure enough, they gave me some books, and uh, as I was drawn more and more into the Catholic Church, I understood suffering from a different perspective and was able to embrace suffering. And now, even now, though, as I review some of these uh, messages of 24 years ago, I am being reminded of what a poor job I have done of suffering and of always trying to embrace the cross. Um, there have been many, many times in the uh, grotesqueness and agony of the pain when it would become very severe that I would cry out or, or go into despair. I would write and write and practically be desolate. But he always brings us through and all of you are rare and beautiful birds in this lifetime. All of you have the great capacity to attain to unconditional love. His real presence places those graces within us when we ask and when we desire and when we so really, really need. When we need his help and cry out to him and ask for it, the help comes. And it's an interesting perspective, and it's a true perspective, that pain at other levels and dimensions is sheer joy. 
I was told this in the very first encounter of the six or seven encounters I had back in the late spring and early summer of 1988. And uh, in another video, I will share who it was who appeared to me and started speaking in, in a most embarrassing place. <laughs> um, it's all very humbling. Suffering is very humbling, and it uh, suffering is a good way to ensure humility is brought to our doorstep, our physical doorstep. But I was very surprised then, after I became Catholic, to uh, recognize who this person was who had spoken to me at the very first. And I believe Luke was maybe the third or fourth maybe the fourth person, um, to give help and to tell me what it was that I was doing. And even now, I would have to say that uh, my temptation to be called back out into the world isn't to be called into the secular world whatsoever, but it's to be, I, I get tempted to uh, want to be active or do things in the temporal Catholic world, in my parish, or in the diocese, or uh, and even my spiritual director about a year ago went through a process with me where he thought all of a sudden, oh, I should be teaching at the parish, or I should be working at the Women's Care Center, I should be utilized. And oh, the temptation got me all excited thinking, oh yes, maybe I will be, maybe I will be. And, and it wasn't to be. His real presence closed every single door in very humbling manner. And um, even this last week, as I have reflected again on canonical approval versus my uh, consecrated life as a privately professed hermit, um, I, as I reviewed different hermits around the country who I'm aware of, and couple of cases had correspondence. Um, and then when I discovered uh, what our current bishop, his view more or less is of the hermit life as it should be lived out in his perception or view, um, I realized that, that that would not leave me uh, in a space in which his real presence could use me more fully. And uh, even today, the encounters that I had today at Mass, just in a smile to people who came in very downcast, or um, in a cheerful hello after Mass on my way to the car, in a, an encounter with a Muslim clerk at Walmart, or um, in a phone call from a young woman who wanted some guidance and prayer, and to share her excitement, but also her trepidation in applying for grad school. Also, uh, an encounter with a man whose daughter is suffering from a very aggressive and um, rare brain cancer. She's only seven years old. So, or even sharing with you right now, the great beauty of love in the face of suffering and how through unconditional love and a lifetime of learning that we can endure and we can do great good for others in the world and to glorify God. So God bless his real presence in all of you and thank you for your forbearance in my sharing of some of these personal yet um, what I feel are beautiful and what Teresa of Avila said are meant for me to share.